Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new here, welcome. I'm so happy to have you. Today is going to be the sixth video in the core concept series. So as a reminder, this core concept series is a back to the basic series in which we are really trying to understand what is going on inside the body so that we can better um, diagnose, assess, diagnose, and treat clients um, with acute and chronic conditions that we may be caring for. So today's video is going to be on inflammation. Now I will link the previous videos in the description box below. And remember that for each of these core concepts videos, I do have a corresponding study guide for you in my Etsy shop. So remember that when you're learning content, it, it's not only important to hear it and try to memorize it or understand it, but it's even more important that you can apply that information. So if you want to practice with that application, each of these core concepts videos does have a study guide consisting of two or three pages, a client scenario and multiple questions that you can attempt to answer. And then there is an answer key always provided. So if you're interested in that, I will link my Etsy shop in the description box below. But today, let's talk about inflammation. So inflammation by definition is a response to cellular injury, allergy, or an invasion of pathogens. And we just talked um, about infection. So of course, infection and inflammation are going to go hand in hand. So not surprising when we look at interrelated concepts to inflammation, we think about pain, which is a result of inflammation, immunity, tissue integrity, and then of course, infection. Now, inflammation can occur anywhere in the body and it may or may not be observed. So remember, if it's on the exterior of the body, we can see signs of inflammation. However, if it's inside the body, such as cholecystitis or appendicitis, we might not necessarily see that inflammation. We might have to use other techniques to assess for it. The cardinal signs of inflammation are redness, warmth, swelling, and pain. So pain um, meaning tenderness. So if it's an in, uh, internal inflammation, we might can assess for tenderness. However, if it's an external inflammation, we will usually see all of these signs. So inflammation, much like infection, is categorized as acute or chronic. Um, so acute is going to be a, that localized, um, or it could be systemic, but it is confined to a single area of the body or a single organ. So um, localized could be a cut on the leg that has become um, inflamed, or it could be a systemic acute infection, such as that cholecystitis or appendicitis. We also can have chronic inflammation. So this is usually a result of, I often think about autoimmune disorders. So for example, inflammatory bowel disease or rheumatoid arthritis that are causing more of a um, systemic or widespread throughout the body chronic inflammation. So risk factors for developing inflammation. It's easy, everybody is at risk for inflammation. It's a normal reaction to injury. So anytime we are injured, our body is going to have an inflammatory response. The physiologic consequences of in particular severe inflammation could be loss of function of the affected body part or the organ. So think about cholecystitis. So whenever a client has that inflammation of the gallbladder, that gallbladder is dysfunctional. It's not functioning the way it's supposed to. And often it does need to be removed. Assessment of course, are going to be the cardinal signs, which we just discussed. But if not observable, then we do want to monitor for signs of organ dysfunction. So if you have an organ that's inflamed, and that organ is showing signs of dysfunction, you're going to see that whether it's in physical signs and symptoms, vital signs, laboratory studies. So we need to monitor for that specific organ dysfunction. Preventing inflammation is very easy. It's about preventing injury. Now it's easy for me to say it's about avoiding injury. As we, we know as human beings, it's not always easy to avoid injury. But think about all the ways that we can teach our clients to um, at least minimize the risk for injury, those are going to prevent or minimize the risk for inflammation. When we think about interventions for inflammation, for localized inflammation, I like to think about the acronym REST. So I'm sure you guys have all heard that before. So if you've ever had a, you know, a swollen ankle, so you, you know, you've sprained your ankle and it's now inflamed. Um, 
R is for rest, I is for ice, E, C is for compress, and E is for elevate. So we're going to rest the extremity, put ice on it to vasoconstrict the vessels and reduce swelling, compress, which will also cause vasoconstriction and reduce swelling, and then elevate the extremity above the level of the heart. So um, RICE is a really good acronym to remember for localized inflammation. Now we also want to monitor for neurovascular compromise and that's gonna be distal um, to the injury. So we're looking at distal perfusion. So if you have a client that for example, has a fractured femur, we want to monitor for blood flow past that injury. And if blood flow is not able to get past that injury, we now have a perfusion issue or a blood flow compromise issue that could lead in this case, to a compartment syndrome. So that good neurovascular check, really important distal to the injury. And then of course we do have drugs, uh, medications, which do help with inflammation. Antipyretics um, will help with um, reducing any fever associated with infection, associated with inflammation. NSAIDs are really good at reducing inflammation. So ibuprofen, corticosteroids also help with inflammation. Then we also have biologic response modifiers, which we often see as treatment in some of those, um, what's the word I'm looking for, in some of those um, autoimmune disorders that I just mentioned, and then antihistamines as well. So remember, inflammation can be a response to an allergen, and so antihistamines are good at um, suppressing or preventing an inflammatory response to an allergen. Okay guys, so hopefully this is helpful and you learned something that maybe you didn't already know. If you have any questions or you would like to contact me or leave a comment in the box below or contact me via email or my Twitter account. Do you remember that there is a case study that goes along with this video? Important that you not only um, understand and memorize this information, but you also can apply it in a client situation. So if you're interested in that study guide, please do check out my Etsy shop, which will be linked in the description box below, as well as all of the previous core concepts videos. Have a wonderful day.